tough. If you made it this far, congratulations. We're at final assembly. Um, if you followed me and I've sent you a, a, a mod kit um, or one of them, whether you've gotten the pre-assembled one or I've just sent you uh, the parts, you, you'll have something like this. If I send you a pre-assembled kit, it'll look a lot better than this. Um, but anyways, this is going to be multi-step multi-stage there's a few different things to do here and uh, order of operations really important have a hot glue gun ready have your orb weaver handy but for now we're going to focus on this um before you go too far take a moment and plug up your uh, teensy joystick and flash the firmware and make sure that that's all working and uh, also make sure that this seats properly inside of here it should look like that and it should be flush so you can't see the bottom of the cup this should just be or the bottom of the, the cup lip it should seat all the way in flush like that if that works you're good you don't want to get to the last step of this and realize oh no we don't fit and then you gotta back things up and yeah, that's no fun anyways so the first part of this is going to be getting this cup in and uh, kind of secured down. And we're going to do that first. So you'll have this in the way, and that's this, this is a lot of fun, but that's there. Just keep that in mind. Go ahead and get that ribbon cable or your bundle of wires or whatever you've done kind of arranged into that slot. And um, if you followed the videos I did on the Tartarus, which will be linked, on assembling this cup and wiring it to the teensy and stuff, you should have a marked line on the body of the cup for up. That's important. Um, orientation is important. If you get this in and glued down, secured, and you've not given a thought to where up is, you're going to have a hard time. So um, what you want to do is uh, on the orb body, up is basically pointing at this screw here in the orb body so you want to orient I've got a gold sharpie line you want to point it at that screw hole so go ahead and get your um, ribbon your wires kind of bent up off the bottom of the cup um, because you want everything to feed on the outside of this plate and just work it in it's a little fiddly but it should just all seat in and good that's how it should look you should have the d-pad and the plate coming out you should have the uh, enclosure and the ribbon cable coming out it's what you want we can flip it over and um, I'm gonna in hopes of keeping this as short as possible I'm going to do one dab of glue and let it dry and do the rest off camera so you can so you can uh, focus this on yourself and I can do it correctly, not through a camera preview. Anyways, I'm in here, flipped over, I'm looking for my gold line, there it is, and I'm gonna point it at the screw hole on the underside, which is right here. You know, it's right there on top, and it's right here on the bottom. So point your, your line, your up line, at that screw hole. And if you do that right, you will have up oriented correctly. This is where it gets fun. Um, gluing is fun. I'm looking for a toothpick. I had one, and I don't know where it is now. No big deal. I'll use this bent paper clip. Um, so the, I found the best way to do it is to get a, a, a glob of glue and then spread it with another tool. So I'm with my left hand, I'm holding the cup flush down or up in this case also holding it still so up remains oriented a gold line there and then I'm going to just put a dab of glue right in here oh make sure you don't touch the body of the orb too much or at all with the hot glue gun it will mar it so just try to dribble glue in there. Don't try to press it in. That's what you're using the other tool, like a toothpick or a paper clip for. So just, you don't need a ton either. I'm just getting some in. There. 
now it's in I can spread it around Once so you get one side done it's a lot easier so I'm just gonna hold this still while this sets and um, off camera I'll do the other points I tend to do like one here and then one on that side as well just kind of three points of contact and then you're all right so I've got it glued up there there and it's hard to see in the light but there and uh, you know it's it's secure it's not going anywhere all right hey guys we're gonna do an awkward cut I forgot a step um, before you screw in screw down this PCB you need to test plug in your teensy and test it and make sure you've got input and like it's actually working um, because you need to glue down um, the stick body to the bottom of the cup um, so what I've done and the bottom of these cups that you'll get in the kit is I've put um, convenient glue holes so like there's one there there's one kind of here between the wires and then there's also four um, legs that come like so like right there right there and there's one there and there's one here under the wires you don't need to hit all of them what you're just trying to do is provide a little bit of um, a little bit of glue that will secure the stick inside the cup so it doesn't move um, it's already pretty snug because it's got one two three four five six plus four it's got ten legs coming through these through holes so it's already pretty secure but this is just to make sure so with one hand just kind of on the bottom side put some pressure on the stick to make sure it doesn't move and then um, find the most convenient glue hole in my case it's going to be this leg right here and just, just put some glue in it so a hot glue I like hot glue again we like hot glue because it's not permanent all right another awkward edit because I realized I had not preheated my hot glue gun anyways we're gonna get um, we're gonna get that leg hole right there don't do any of the holes that have wires coming out of them just do the ones that either go to the base of the stick like this one and this one in the middle they actually connect to plastic nubs on the bottom of the stick body or that um, are for the uh, PCB legs um, if you were gonna solder these sticks to a PCB uh, those would go there but we're not so they're just there for extra security so again I'm just gonna hold the stick from the back and then I'm gonna hit this right there I'm gonna hit that hole you don't want to do too much just one squirt this is a mini gun I'm not sure what the flow would be on a larger gun but really just make sure I do a test squirt on my desk to make sure it's coming out and then I put it up against it and do one squirt I've done too much and it actually flows in between this bottom of the stick body and the the cup base and can flow into the potentiometer one of the potentiometers and it ruined the stick basically so don't do that just give it one squirt you're just trying to hold the thing down all right just kind of let that sit for a minute I'll do one more and then um, I'll do the rest myself off camera I'll let y'all do the rest for yourselves I'm gonna get um, I'm gonna move my thumb out of the way and get that one right there put it there I don't want to burn myself did it you would probably be good at this point as I said you don't need a lot but um, get as many as you can you don't want to be in the middle of of playing and uh, you know it come loose or it fall off your desk and come loose or something like that but this one over here should be cooled so I'm gonna 
let go with my thumb, with my finger. That's not my thumb, that's my finger. And uh, you should be set. All right. All right, so now we're gonna start to reassemble um, the actual PCBs. Um, so you're gonna want your, uh, your, your button hat that came with the orb, your LED PCB, and uh, have your container of screws that you took out handy, keep it close. Um, be careful not to knock it over. I've done that before and oh my gosh, it's a headache trying to find everything on the floor because they're small pieces. So start by putting this guy in. Just slips right in like that, no problem. And then before you go too much farther, uh, go ahead and plug in your stuff from the orb weaver. Uh, this is where things get finicky because now you've got this really short cable kind of limiting your range of movement but uh, it's still it's still workable. So go ahead and plug this guy in right here carefully. You don't want to bend any pins. It goes one way so if you don't feel it slide in easily it means you're forcing it. You should stop and check it out and see what you're doing wrong. LED. Go ahead and get that plugged in. It's much easier to plug these in now as opposed to when they're screwed down. These boards are screwed down. Much easier. Much easier. So let's go ahead and get this guy right here. I need to flip this over. This is getting finicky. You just be careful because you've got, um, should be mostly solid, but there are some delicate solder joints. I'm just going to trim some of these uh, leads really quick that I've got on the bottom. Forgot to after the other video. Uh, leads, the legs of the wires that I put through. I didn't mean to say leads. I meant wire legs is what I meant. And just kind of work things slowly and carefully. You don't want to rip or unplug anything at this point. It's a pain in the butt if you do. This goes around like that. And I'm realizing mostly you can just see my hands. There. Got that lined up. All right, so I can already tell I need to kind of spread these these out a little bit and flatten them because they're they're bulging too much. There, that's a lot better. That's a lot better. Now, so for this part. You need these these screws that have the 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 flat the flat uh, head and this leg right here. Now this is going into plastic, so make sure that you uh, turn it backwards first to make sure that you get the threads lined up with the previous cut threads. You don't want to strip that. That ain't no fun either. And then this side right here. That's secure. Perfect. Let's move the LEDs out of the way. And let's get this guy set. This dude. Okay, so one thing that I didn't show when I was dremeling on this little breakout board, you have to dremel away. There is a corner here and I dremeled it away. Um, you don't want to, uh, you obviously don't want to cut into this hole or that hole. You just want to take that corner so it fits on here next to the cup because the cup is obviously just taking up a lot more room than the factory D-pad. All right, that's in. And we need one more of those flat headed screws. If 
you haven't guessed, this is basically the reverse of the assembly. Or the disassembly, sorry. All right, those are all in. All right, now let's do the uh, let's do the LED PCB. Um, you need these two long screws. They're a bit longer than the other screws in there, and you need these two kind of plastic um, wedges. It's oriented face down, kind of like this. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be difficult to see here in this light, but there are some, there are two screw pegs that are right there on the body. So you just kind of get that in there. You can see one right there. And there's another one under my thumb. So let's do this one right here. So the wedge goes flat side down. And then the screw goes into the hole in the wedge. Oops, we'll fish that out later. And by later, I mean now. It's one side, and then the other. Yeah, I messed that up. You get the idea. As I said, this is the reverse of the disassembly. And there's a lot of small parts. I'm probably gonna have to do this second one off camera so I can turn it and see it anyways. Yeah, I did not get that lined up properly. I'll do this off camera. Anyways, you get the idea. You get uh, these boards back in place, and then uh, we'll move on to the rest of the assembly after that. All right, guys, here we are, next step. At this point, what you've got should look something like this. Um, what we're gonna be doing next is uh, taking this, this back of the, uh, that came from the factory and reattaching it. Um, if you've made it this far, you should stop before this step and test everything. Plug up the orb weaver, plug up the teensy, make sure the stick registers and moves, make sure the D-pad works, make sure the thumb sled works, make sure that button works, make sure it all works, um, because we're getting to the point where we're gonna start doing a lot of, um, uh, oh, there's, a, there's a lot of screws to put back, uh, there's going to be some gluing that you don't want to have to undo and then redo. So do yourself a favor, test things now so you don't have to uh, redo this after the fact. Ask me how I know. That's not fun. So for this, there's going to be four screws. I will get them out so you can see them. They all look like that. I'll hold. Let me get them out and I'll hold one up for you. They're all the same size. And uh, digging around in my little collection bin of stuff that comes off of these guys. There's three. And there's four. Beautiful. Got it. Okay, fellas. Looks like that. So, this isn't that difficult. This cable here can be a little fiddly, so um, I like to start by finding the notch on the back of this plate and just inserting that into the slot on the, uh, the cable protector. I'm not sure what else that is. I think it's a spacer. So that it sits, and then really all you're doing is just kind of squeezing them together gently so you don't break or move anything too horribly and just kind of get it into where it fits. Be mindful of this, this thumb sled. You don't want to pinch too badly. Um, make sure that it's kind of more on the 
the right side. Not so right like that, more like right here. Just keep it there. There we go. You'll feel it. You can know if you kind of squeeze there and kind of look right here. Yeah, that, that that's good. And over here looks pretty good. So there's three screws. There's one um, here, here, here on the top, and then there's one more on the bottom there. We're going to do this one first. It's kind of easiest to get to, and it will hold things in place. So just you're not wanting to tighten this all the way. You're just wanting it to bite and then give it a little bit more so that it doesn't strip. Now you can come and do the bottom. It's right there. This part is so much easier. It used to be really difficult because you had a bunch of cabling inside, and that's not the case anymore. This one right here. And then this one right here. There's no need to crank these all the way down. You're just wanting them to just hold stuff in place for you. I can tell that doesn't want to be cranked all the way down. There is a minor bit of impact on the back of this cup on the inside that kind of hits right here-ish. You could cut that out. I don't like doing it. It's not necessary. Just That's why I'm saying don't, don't crank these screws down all the way. There's no need. Just really just enough so this stays in place and you can still push that button. All right, we're good. Those are all in. And if you tested everything before you did this step, then you should feel pretty confident. Next up will be, um, we're gonna be uh, getting this. And this on, and uh, this is easily my least favorite part. This spring is really fiddly. Um, it's really, really quite lame. Go ahead and have uh, at least one, if not two, of these really tiny little screws handy <laughs> not fun um, we can also do this part as well it's not absolutely necessary to do first but you know let's do it first this is because it's a lot easier. This just snaps into place. You've got a bunch of legs on the bottom and they just kind of make sure they line up. They will break if you're not perfectly aligned, but just, uh, you know, take your time. Line up the slots and push it in. One. good and there's one screw another one of these buggers that goes right there make gravity work for you it's 
Sometimes this magnetic screwdriver head is a curse. I find it better to have than not have, but yeah, whatever. That's in. All right, now we'll do we'll do these guys. And I find the best way to do it is to kind of get it flat like this. And then you're trying to work this edge of the spring against that edge while this kind of ledge here fits into that slot. Good luck. Uh, it takes me a bit normally to get this. Um, and once you do, you're going to want to hold it here with your thumb while you slip this guy up underneath it. So that's why I'm saying have those screws ready. So I kind of do it like this to get gravity working for me. And then just, I mean, I don't know how else to say it. You just kind of got to finesse it on there. It's going to take a bit. Uh, I'm probably going to work on this off camera because the chances of me getting it, I think I just got it. <laughs> That's funny. You'll know it if you kind of hold your thumb right here and push it. If it springs back, you're good. Yeah, I got it. Dang. I've. You know what? I don't think I've ever done it that fast. Just, oh no, I lost it. Oh no, I got it back. Okay. Sheesh, so, I hate this. I hate that part. This guy has got a, a, a notch right there that will hold this in place. So just slip him in. And then you can hold this with your thumb and it stays in place. And you can. Oh wow. I You know what? I'm surprised at how quickly I did that. S truly. And then just get these screws. These are very small screws, so be careful with them because they will bounce off of your table and into your carpet and you'll never find them again. One there. You can probably let it go now, but I like to just go ahead and do a second one here before I dig through for the other ones. I'm gonna do the rest of this off camera. All, all you're doing is screwing in this one and this one. Leave the middle one undone that's one of the last things you do um, and you'll see why all right I've got all that in that still works perfect so now we're gonna attach the side module back onto this leg first thing is make sure there's a little button here put that in and you can slide the, this whole pad in and out make it sure it's all the way out and then you're gonna have to really stretch to get this to fit, it will go, but there it goes. All right, and you'll see the reason why we saved that last screw, because it will it's holding this in. There's a track on the bottom right here, and so that screw right there keeps this from falling off, so let's just put that in. And uh, you can you can basically make that as tight as you want. I don't think it fully hits the trough of that track, but you know I should have had the screw ready, anyways. There, that ain't coming off. Now pull it all the way out, and let's do the infamous spring and ball. They both go into this hole here. Ball first. Um, I do not find these to be necessary. It's stock from factory, so I do include it. But if you lose it, and I have, like I said, they will bounce off your table and fly into the carpet and you'll never see them again. It's not a huge deal. It's not absolutely necessary, but just be, just be careful. There, I pop, plopped it in. And I use a little screwdriver to kind of push it in and then I fish this spring out there's the screw you need I'll show you the screw it's pretty it's pretty thick 
I will find the spring in here somewhere. There it is. All right. And then uh, the spring, you just get it started with your finger. And again, kind of shove it in with the screwdriver. And it's this screw. It's one of the bigger ones. It's an odd angle. But get it pushed in with your finger. And then, uh, you know, I just knocked it off. Gonna have to redo that. This is pretty fiddly. I'm getting not so bad at doing this through the camera preview. Yeah, this is gonna be tricky. This stupid magnetic screwdriver head. There. Maybe it will stay now. There, I got it. That doesn't need to be incredibly tight. It's just keeping the spring in. Now, this should feel nice and good and smooth, yeah. I think that ball and spring just enhances the tactile action of this adjustment. So, it's not necessary, but it, I think it feels good. All right. And all we've got left to do is just kind of secure down all of our loose pieces and that'll be next. All right, guys. Get this where it looks all right. Wow. So where we're at now is getting this plate here secured down. So one thing you need to be aware of, well, there's a few things you need to be, you need to be aware of, is you've got a lip here on the inside, goes all the way around, that fits against, snug against this, uh, this ledge here. And there's a balance here of tightening this screw down too much, which will push this cup up or too loose and the whole thing coming apart. So there's a, there's a balance there. Just tighten and loosen this until this, uh, this cup mostly comes down and then do some dry some dry seatings to make sure that you can reliably get this on and you feel it you feel that ring snap into place it shouldn't snap you should feel it seat um, there may or may not be a small gap you know along the along the edge here it's okay. I think it's mostly unavoidable for now until this design keeps getting tweaked. But for now, that's what we're working with. So the goal here is to um, use some more hot glue. We like hot glue because it's, it's reversible. And as it stands, this cup is not going to move because it's secured from the bottom. I'm going to hit it with glue. Oops, drop my screwdriver. A blob right here, a blob kind of right here, and one right there. I'm trying to keep it away from these ribbons. And let's talk about the ribbons. Look on the bottom here. You see this channel in the plate? That's where these ribbons kind of have to fit. So again, kind of dry fit it a little bit and see if you can get things to line up properly. It should kind of look like that. I'm trying to keep, trying to keep that there. So just be mindful because um, you kind of got one chance at this. If you mess it up, you can probably separate it carefully with a knife or with some rubbing alcohol because dried hot glue does separate quite easily when it's exposed to rubbing alcohol. So um, do your dabs of glue get this on here let it dry and then uh, we'll do the next step so I'll show you kind of what I'm gonna do
there, there, there. I'm going to quickly get this into place. Got it. I'm just going to hold it. I'm just kind of making sure this, this still moves. I got some up there, but we can scrape that away. Not a big deal. on okay and uh, here's where we're at now is securing this sled I've kind of already dry fitted it it's not overly complicated it just kind of goes into this slot here make sure that wire comes out of the top is that focused kind of eh. trying to get a focus for you guys it's not doing so great Anyways, there's a there's a notch here. There's a notch here in the top of this sled. Just make sure that wire is kind of pushed in as much as you can get it. It just will not focus. This being this close, and I can't get it farther away. Okay, make sure that wire is pushed into that slot well enough and then just dry fit it in. You may have to kind of slide one in first and then slide it around. Now before you before you secure it, I've found that it is important to get the, um, the final little rubber foot that came from the factory secured into place. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like. It looks like that and uh, it just kind of just kind of goes on the bottom here if you peeled it off carefully enough it should have enough of the original ed adhesive on it that you can just kind of push it down and it'll stay yeah that's staying we do that because um, this sled needs to be flushed to the surface as this little module here so let's Slide it out. Let me get this up. Now we can glue this into place. And uh, I find the best way to do that, just from the bottom, there's a gap here. It doesn't take much, just a little bit of glue. Shoot it in and then immediately flip it over and put it flat on the ground and push it down so it's flush and that way when it cools it will be flush with the rest of the body so we're just going to do that really quick super fast, get it over and just hold that, hold it all down and uh, it, you might glue it to the desk, just be careful when you go to peel it up. I did a little bit, no I didn't, okay I'm good. And just let that set for a moment. While that's setting, let's talk about the next step here. It's going to be getting this cover onto the D-pad. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is, I could use some hot glue here, I might. Um, I'm probably going to use some of this. Uh, it's like rubber cement that you use in elementary school, but it's a little bit stronger. And just use a toothpick. The way this works is you kind of paint 
both surfaces. I'll paint the top of these plungers and the in the inside of these little cups. You let them sit exposed for like 10 minutes until it gets tacky, and then you can just seat it down and the the, the pre-tacked adhesive it really sticks to each other. This is cool. Again, it's not permanent, so you could separate it, um, but it, it will be enough to hold it in place. And then after that, we'll get the teensy inside the enclosure and attached to that side. So that should be long enough for us to look at look at this thumb. I did stick it to the table. That's okay. It really shouldn't be stuck. There. Got it. And uh, you can see on the bottom there, you can clean that up with a little X-Acto knife, but you know, you wiggle it and the entire module moves, that means you got it secured well. It ain't going anywhere. And that's perfect. That's what I want. Now we've got this. And we're good. All right. Moving on. Okay. So um, I've painted with the contact cement these uh, circles here which is where these plungers sit and I also painted the plungers I've waited about 15 10 15 minutes the instructions say 20 but uh, <clears throat> I don't want to wait that long um, the idea is you, it's the, the adhesive kind of sets and gets a skin and so that when you touch them together um, it should bond and that's what we're gonna do so you got to get this right you should have dry fitted this a few times before we're doing this right now to make sure that you know what it feels like when it's you know in place. Um, so you've kind of got one chance at this, otherwise you're going to be putting a screwdriver or a knife up in there to separate this, and that ain't no fun. So I'm going to just be carefully doing this. And I got it. Just make sure that, yeah, I've got strong clicks on each one. Hi, kitty cat. Don't know if y'all can hear her. Yeah, she's upset that no one is snuggling her on the couch, and so she's in here talking to me about it. There, that's good. And so now we've got all of our stuff, all of our stuff secured and in place. That click, that click, this moves, that's, that's pushing, the stick does not impact the top of this button, which is what I wanted. That's why we did low profile. That's awesome. I can reach over and hit every single one of those. You can see this flexing, which is what we want. We don't want that to be so brittle that it snaps. Thank you, PETG. This is all turning out. Keep in mind, this is the first time I've, I've assembled this particular version myself, and we're doing it together. So I feel like Bob Ross a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, next part is going to be the Teensy enclosure and securing that. I'm gonna just get everything out and then I will cut and edit. We need electrical tape. We need double-sided foam tape, though I like using the red label double-sided foam tape and a pair of scissors. And while we're at it, some snips. Okay. Here we are, double-sided foam tape, electrical tape. You don't have to use double-sided foam tape. I like it, again, it's not permanent, but it holds really well. You could use whatever you wanted to use here. You could let it loose, hang loose. You could also use glue, Sugru, I don't know, tape, you can do what you want. Um, we've got these snips here, because on the bottom of this teensy, you will have solder points. Just make sure that there's nothing really sticking out. So you're snipping all the excess like legs and things. You will have tested this before you are doing this, plugging it in and making sure that everything works. If you haven't, then you're doing it wrong. So anyways, all that's good. I'll put these away. Here comes the fun part. Um, when you are putting the teensy into the enclosure, you've got to be careful that, wow, I don't know if you can hear my children screaming, but they're doing some shenanigans. Um, you got to be careful that you do, do not scrape this button 
on this surface because it will come off. It will come off and that's no fun. I've had to repair that and that's just no fun. So just be really mindful of that. It, 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 this is a tight fit. It will go in, I promise, but just be really, really slow. Take your time. If you're finding you're having to force something, stop, take a break, look at it because you can break something. Um, there are tracks in here that this should fit into. So just take your time, work it in. Yeah, they're chasing each other. Oh, fatherhood. There that went. That's going. That's going. It's going. All right, so I've got it close. I'm just going to take a screwdriver and kind of lift this lip right here because this material is flexible because I really don't want to rip this button or just kind of push it down and make sure you're focusing on that yeah I think I can snake it in there I really should be doing this off camera <laughs> got it it's in the goal is that from this angle you've got that plug lined up there and from here you can see both the button and the LED which is right in there you'll see it and that's good we got it and now I can just kinda secure it there I'm gonna angle it that way with some double-sided tape this is a piece of cake you don't need a lot. Wow, this stuff, man, it is super sticky. 3M did some, made some, wow, that was not intentional. It stuck to the scissors, so we're just gonna make the best of it. Alright guys, so if you've made it this far um, and you've been testing along the way, as I've advised, you should have the hardware basically done. Um, I, I'm just going to kind of look over everything with you and I've got a black sharpie here. Um, as I've handled this, I've found some of the, um, the paint to kind of scrape a little bit and I find that the sharpie kind of hides those spots pretty well. especially like along this button you can see that line there just gonna touch up you don't want to do big areas because the sharpie will look red against the true black so this is just touch up stuff um, I've got another scheme brewing I've got some dye on the way I'm gonna try to dip these parts and dye we'll see how that goes but um, for now this is what I'm doing Um, so all that looks good. Again, this all that all works. This D-pad, all those buttons are clicky. You can feel them distinctly click. That's what you want. Um, looking good. And then you can see the enclosure back there. Just gonna touch that up. down and try to yeah, everything's secure nothing's going anywhere it fits good well this will focus ah, that focused well okay cool that looks good and uh, 
touching this up. And I'm really thrilled that at this point this is completely reversible and I'm not cutting except for that cut for the stick. There's no real huge holes. That's great. You could even color that if you wanted to like paint that cable you could hide it. Yeah, this is looking good. I still think there's room for improvement and I'm probably gonna do a few mods and figure out what the deficiencies are and then improve it. If there are major changes to the hardware, I'll do an update video, but my goal is to try to keep it as close to this as possible moving forward because I think this is this is a pretty good design overall. It just needs to be iterated on some more. That's all. Um, okay, so um, I'm gonna we're gonna upload this and then the next video will be the changes to the firmware. There are some. I've also been working on that. That code is a little bit different now, and uh, you'll see. But uh, from a hardware perspective, we're done. Congratulations if you follow me and you've done this for yourself. You should feel proud. Anyways, yeah, I'm happy with that. I think that's pretty handsome, especially compared to if you look back on the videos from even a few years ago where I was just cutting a real nasty hole, a real gnarly hole, and shoving a stick in there. This is so much better. And I think that the low-profile dome looks good. The D-pad looks good. The thumb sled, I mean, all that, yeah. For a uh, aftermarket mod off of a 3D printer, I'm pretty happy with that turnout. I think I'm, the main thing I'm going to do right now is the, uh, the, the height on the lip of the cup under here. I'm going to cut that height in half because the biggest deficiency I'm seeing right now is that when you screw down this top, it will push the cup up and there's a small gap here in the plate. I can't do much about that except shove some glue in there. I'm not going to do that for this guy because I think it's secure. It's not going anywhere, but one of the things I will do is I will um, reduce the height on that cup. All right trying to remember what I was saying before my phone ran out of storage space. I'm going to reduce the height on that lip so this can sit more flush. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really happy that this is on the side here now as opposed to inside there. It 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 can fit in there technically. There's, a, there's enough room, but it was really tight. And you had to... It was tough sometimes getting that wiring to come out properly out of here and kind of snake up, and I think this is much better. All right, like I said, next up is firmware. Um, we'll go over that, and then uh, I can get this shipped out. And uh, yeah, congrats! You should feel proud of yourself for getting this far. This is a this is a fun mod. I'll catch y'all later.